What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Wix here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. And today we're doing another account takeover for our friend Ruby Gloom. She was the third person to win from the last account takeover giveaway. Um, so the first one was done and posted. The second one was just a Discord uh, session where we talked about his account and his clan boss team. And now Ruby has asked us to do some 3v3 uh, teams for her. So I've already I already recorded the video, but I didn't like how it turned out, so we're re-recording. Um, but we'll just go through briefly and touch on different areas of the account so you can get an idea of where she's at in the game. Here with the Great Hall, she's gone for crit damage first, which is a bit unfortunate because you don't really need crit damage that much. Um, what's going to help in Tag Team Arena and in Hard Doom Tower and stuff like that is resistance and accuracy. But it's not bad. I mean, it's the third best, I think, in my opinion. So, anyway, we're going to play to the strengths of that a bit. Um, the account is on day 220. So, kind of in the mid-game, getting there. She's uh, clearing normal, I believe. Well, I don't think she's playing this account much, but she can probably clear normal very easily and working on hard with just a random team here. Um, the only team I didn't touch that I'm not allowed to touch is the clan boss team. Oh, this, this clan isn't even... <laughs> can't even fight Brutal. Okay, so I guess this is just a throwaway account, so... Or something. But that's her main name, so I'm a little confused. Uh, anyway, we'll check out the roster. This account has an abundance of strong 3v3 arena champions. Uh, the unfortunate side is most of them aren't leveled. We've got like Ruel, Umbral, Brachis, Rhonda, Gorgarab. And then these two, which I built, Pytheon and Duchess. Um, Scathix can be good in a go second team for a cleanser, an immunity cleanser. Uh, we go down even further, we've got Sandlash Survivor, which is an amazing go second champ. Gala, amazing single target nuker. And then there was a Skull Crown, yeah, Skull Crown as well. So it's just kind of working her way through. Uh, building all these champions and probably doing faction wars currently. I did uh, go ahead and include Duchess and Py Pytheon in the rebuild because those are probably going to be the next two she gets to 60. And they're too good to not use. These two alone can carry your 3v3 teams. And yeah, just looking at some of the builds, we've got a 200, 300 speed Arbiter. I rebuilt the Herndig for more damage. Um, still a decent amount of accuracy. I switched his accuracy banner for an attack one. But you can switch it back to accuracy if you want him to be a debuffer. Or if you need him for turn meter control. We got Sil here who I would love to see in a high resist build. Also, she really does not need War Master at all. Um... I don't want to use her free reset in case she's using her for dungeons or something. But I would recommend for Sill, you go for Resistance, Rejuvenation, Blast Proof. Then you go down here. And then you can do Cycle of Revenge or you can do Retribution. And then you land on Fearsome Presence. Or if you're having trouble hitting your Resistance numbers, you can go to Unshakable. And then for your support, you can go Accuracy with Arcane Celerity, Evil Eye, and Spirit Haste. Or you can go for more healing potential with Steadfast down here. But I prefer the Accuracy route. Because when you're getting into Hard Doom Tower, it's really hard to hit the Accuracy requirements as well as the Resistance. While still building her tanky and in Relentless preferably. But your ideal sill is going to be running around 200 plus speed, 400 to 450 resistance, and like 250 to 280 accuracy. 
And then you can use Mithrala or Drekstar Accuracy Aura to boost her the rest of the way for hard Doom Tower. Trunda here, I didn't touch her build. She's looking pretty good. I do have her in a go second team. So you can consider putting her in this reaction ring here. Just give her a little bit of extra tank uh, tank ability. Uh, I did steal some gear off uh, champs. So you're going to want to go through your account and make sure your dungeon teams aren't completely gutted. You can see there's like a piece missing <laughs> every so often. Um, Tayrell I'm using in one of the teams as a placeholder for a nuker. You're going to want to get a different nuker in his spot. Stagnite, I boosted his speed a bit. Deacon uh, probably needs a little bit more speed. So you can like glyph. Yeah, you're going to want to glyph his banner. And then get a bigger glyph on his weapon. Bigger glyph on his helmet. Bigger glyph on his shield. Other than that, his build is pretty nice. He's got a decent amount of accuracy. And more accuracy to come when you max out this banner. So I just want to take a quick peek. 255 speed. I have him on a team with Maneater. Two fifty six speed. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a glyph on here. Hopefully it lands. Nice. Okay, so he should be faster than Man Eater now. Which is exactly what you want. <clears throat> um I rebuilt well I didn't rebuild Gurgo. Actually, I don't think I touched him at all, but he definitely needs more accuracy. My preference for a Gurgo build is you go triple perception, which gives you a ton of accuracy just off the sets, and you build him for damage. So he can be squishy when you use him on a, a speed team, and that's where I would prefer to use him. I did rebuild your Nekmo. Uh, he's got a lot of stuff you can level up here, obviously, during an artifact event. For the purpose of this showcase, I didn't go ahead and use all your silver because we're currently in Bronze 2 Tag Team, so you don't really need... I didn't really need to go through uh, and level everything up for this showcase. And then down here, we've got Duchess in a regen set, which is a great set for her for not only for Arena, but for PvE. With a Reaction Ring on, and Pytheon is in a Shield set. Preferably, you'd get him in a bolster set eventually. Or you can put him in stone skin. Or you can build him like Duchess. But what you're going to want to do with these guys is max their resistance. And this is where the Great Hall comes into play massively. You're going to want to get at least four, 400 to 500 resistance on your Duchess and your Pytheon. While still maintaining around 220 speed. And as much hit, hit points and defense as you can. Um, using the artifact optimizer from Hell Hades is a good way to build these champions, and that's what I've been doing. So, in terms of masteries for Duchess, um, you definitely go defense masteries. So, you're going to max out her resistance. And you're also going to go blast proof for PvE. Retribution is good to get her shield shield off. And then when you get to tier 6, go for Unshakable. You could go for Timely Intervention as well, but I don't, I don't find it that useful. I'd much rather have the Resistance to boost that up as much as possible. Um, Shadow Heal is good for her. Solidarity can be good. In terms of support... Um, I'm going to have to double check how I have my Duchess. I think I go down here for the healing, for the regen set. Oh, I definitely go down to Spirit Haste. So it's probably Steadfast. Shield Bearer for more shields. Uh, more turn meter when her buffs expire. Chance to decrease a random skill cooldown. Or you can go for Lore of Steel. I think the cooldown is better. And then Spirit Haste. Um, from here you can do Lasting Gifts. 
Or you can go for the cycle of revenge. I think lasting gifts is a bit better. So I'll leave that to your discretion. Pythion doesn't have his masteries, so I won't worry about that. Um, I'm going to see if you have any brews for him, though. Yeah, you've got some void brews. I'm just going to pump his levels up a little bit. Because he was having a really tough time surviving. Okay, we'll use 20 brews. So, we're in bronze 2. Um, and these were the teams that you were running before. So, one thing you always want to keep track of, or keep in mind, is when people are attacking you in 3v3, they're generally just putting their strongest team first, followed by their second strongest team and their third strongest team. At least until you get to higher tiers. Most people are lazy and don't switch it around much. So I usually put my strong speed team in the last slot. And then my weakest team in the top. So I'm going to put in the teams that I had pre-built uh, pre for you. And then I'll set up the AI and I'll be right back. Alright, these are the teams that I came up with for you. Um, there's obviously a lot of optimization that will go into these teams down the road when you have new champs leveled. Like, eventually you're going to want to split up Pytheon and Duchess. And then you'll probably put Mithrala with Duchess for your cleanser. Um, the one key to having a successful go second team is not only do you have to survive the first hit, but then you need to de like usually cleanse yourself because so, you'll have a lot of debuffs on. And... Uh, have a, a way to damage and actually kill the enemy team so P pytheon is perfect for this because he's not only got the cleanse but he's got the the revive and he comes with a resistance aura you've got like um here i'll just go in here and show you you've got a sandlash survivor and a seeker so like this would be one possibility for a go second team when you have the champs leveled um, champions like Seeker, Seeker, Sandlashed, uh, your Vogoths, anyone that can carry a large bolster set, they're good for surviving the first nuke due to their passives. So you want to use those to your advantage. And then having a nuker with like Skullcrown with the built-in unkillable is another good way to use a Go Second champ. I have Trunda in your Go Second team now because she's got such high base hit points. So she's going to be a lot tankier than any of your other nukers. Plus she's also outputs enough damage that you can uh, you don't need a decreased defense to take out the enemy team. So I'll just show you these teams in action. We've got we're up pretty high in bronze 2, so we actually are able to see some pretty difficult teams. Like this one, I don't know if we'll even be able to kill them, but we're going to try it anyway just to see how it goes their speed team you would throw your go second team against i don't think they're going to survive though but we'll see how it works out any duchess team you want to put your strongest speed team against especially if it's got a strip which gergo does versus the Krisk. and then your last team is kind of your throwaway team but it is a speed team so you put it against another go second team and you hope you can win but mainly in 3v3, you're looking to win two out of three fights. So you want to really build out two of your teams very well. Yeah, no chance. So we got boost, drop defense, strip. And here's the problem with Gergo and why he needs more accuracy. He needs to be able to strip and freeze the Duchess. Because now we're just going to get um, all the all the buffs put out. And it's not really going to help. Not really going to work. If she was frozen now, we'd have a much better chance. Okay, so I think that's a loss, unfortunately. Um, one of your priorities with this account will be to farm more gear. Whether it's from Faction Wars, Doom Tower Bosses. Um, 
You're just really hurting for gear on this account. So this team, another speed team. Um, we can try to steal turn meter off of an important enemy. So if they have full turn meter, we go in, steal turn meter, and then we get another turn because Nekmo can boost. So he's going to boost the uh, Maneater's turn meter up above any of the enemies. And then you get to put up your block debuffs. And then you have your nuker, which again, you need to replace this with a, like a better, a better nuker than Tyrell. At least when you get up to like silver three, silver four, a team like a nuker like Tyrell isn't really going to cut it unless you have really good gear on them. But yeah, your, your gear is very, um, how do I say it's, it's pretty trash on this account. Alright, so this is going to be a loss too. The teams don't have enough damage to cut through the enemies. That's like a team you would see probably up in Silver 3, Silver 4. But you can take something like this. This looks like a very easy team to clear. Again, your go second team goes against their speed team. Which they don't have. So we'll just put it against their weakest team here and hopefully get a win. Your strongest speed team against their strongest team. And then your second speed team against their second team. So this one is all squishies. So I actually think Tayral has a better chance of killing them. Whereas this one is all tanky. So we might need the Herndig damage. Okay, so again, we'll steal some turn meter and then have Nekmo boost. There's our weak ass nuke. <clears throat> but we've got block buffs up now and unkillable, so it gives us a couple of turns to come back around. Decrease defense, strip and freeze. Then you single out, uh, if any of them miss the freeze, you want to single those ones out. Unfortunately, they've got reaction. So instead of trying to use this one, this, this will only attack twice if the first hit crits. So we'll just use the AoE to try to kill as many of them as we can. If they've got reaction, you don't want to risk using that ability. Third team, Sil, Sil is just there for revives, heals, and a little bit of crowd control. Ideally, eventually you'll have Pytheon as the fastest out of them. And then he can cleanse everybody before they get their turn. <clears throat> okay, we'll try this one. This is a little bit more what you'd expect to see. Uh, you would put your Pytheon go second against their fastest speed team. And then your other two speed teams against their go second teams. Once you have Mithrala, you'll have a, a pretty good base for building two speed teams. Or sorry, two go second teams. So yeah, they're not uh, built tanky enough yet. 
to be able to do this really. Yeah, they need level 60 and maxed out gear. Steal some turn meter. Boost us back. Decrease their speed. And nuke. <clears throat> you could also replace the man eater with a drop defense. Might help you uh, nuke through more teams that way. So yeah, the most important part of tag team, it's not only having your champions well built, but it's understanding the win condition of your of your team and which teams you can put it up against. <clears throat> so like here we have two speed teams and a duchess team. This is where you'd want to pull out two go second teams because you don't know if you can go faster than either of these, right? So you'd put a go second team against their fastest team and then ideally a second go second team against their bottom team. In this case, we're going to run... Uh, we're going to run this one as a throwaway because I don't, I don't think we'll be faster than their Lissandra. And I just wanted to show you how your fast team here can go against go second teams. Yeah, Gurgo, <clears throat> you don't have enough perception gear for me to get Gurgo where I wanted him. So unfortunately, it's kind of a gimp team at the moment. If Gurgo can't freeze everybody, it's a little bit, it's a little tough to use him. Gonna try to steal the Saunders turn meter. Boost us back. Nice thing about Maneater, not just the unkillable, but the block debuffs as well. So here we need to kill this miscreated monster as soon as possible. Oh yeah, we can't steal turn meter from Archmage, I forgot. And now we're weak hitting, unfortunately. <clears throat> so these teams should be more than enough to get you to I'd say probably like silver, silver two, so maybe silver three, if you're if you push it. But past that, you're gonna need to do, uh, you need you just need more gear basically. You need a lot more resistances in the great hall, more accuracy on your debuffers. Speed isn't really an issue in a tag team arena, because of how I said, 
You you always put your speed team against slow teams anyway. So your only job is to make sure your debuffers can debuff. And your nuker has enough damage to wipe the board. It's the go second teams where the stats really matter. The resistance, uh, the tankiness, the, the debuffers, the damage. So like here... Um, we'll just try this. But you can kind of see what I'm doing here with the teams anyway. Okay, sadly, we did not get the first action here. But yeah, that's about it. I just uh, set up a few teams I think are going to work well for you. As you get more champions leveled and you get Mithrala and Lydia, you're going to have a lot more options. But keep grinding away at this. Uh, get yourself to into Silver 1, Silver 2. Level up all the gear that you have on your champions. Work on glyphing. But most importantly... Um, you just need to farm more gear. Like, you've got a decent amount of speed. But it's like playing a game of musical chairs. Every time I went to make a build, I was stealing multiple pieces off other people. Um, like, your regen... I think I have more regen on my free-to-play account, my new free-to-play, than you do here. <clears throat> and it really just hurts your ability to build for content. The biggest tragedy is your perception. Where are we? Yeah, like... Resilience and perception. You should you should be, if possible... I know you don't play this account much. But for everyone out else out there on their free-to-play... You should be farming Faction Wars as much as you can every day. Um, by 200 days in... Like, if you look at how much perception is here... It's not much. By 200 days in, you could have like three or four times the amount of good perception pieces. And certainly a lot more of the Doom Tower sets too. So yeah, I think that's about it. Um, let me know how you make out once you start climbing into silver. And if you need any more tips, or if you want me to show you some of my builds that I have on my main account for like Duchess and stuff. Uh, let me know on Discord. So thanks for supporting the YouTube channel. And thanks for letting me play with your account. And I'll catch the rest of you in the next one.